Good evening and welcome to ATV News. My name is Shalama Lawson. On today's bulletin, Africa's first Dreamliner lands in Harare. There's major concern for albinos in Manika land. Zimunya's rural informal sector thrives. And NGOs raise charity money through sport. Zimbabwe toasted the Boeing 787 Dreamliner's first touchdown at Harare International Airport yesterday with the traditional water cannon salute on arrival, sparking cheers from airplane enthusiasts. Jeffrey Moyo gives us the report. Africa first, the first Boeing 787 Dreamliner destined for Africa touched down at Harare International Airport on Monday five days after Ethiopian Airlines took delivery of the aircraft from Boeing in Washington. The scores of people thronged the airport to catch a glimpse of this aircraft configured for 246 economy and 24 business class seats. Uh, it's something which is new in our country. So it's a very something it's some, uh, you know, you know, it will, it will, it will recognize. The Boeing 787, which consumes 20% less fuel than the similarly sized 767, was given the traditional water cannon salute when it taxied on the runway. airlines <laughs> as well as my opportunities in business, uh, you'd find it to uh, attract my airlines in Rwanda, which are very important in Zimbabwe. Other people said other airlines should emulate Ethiopian airlines by choosing Zimbabwe as their destination. We are also encouraging my airlines in Rwanda to also uh, come into this route here yeah, Harare, wherever from wherever uh, corner of the world. At Nokuru Zero, Chaiso, Kuti, Zimu, Nika, the new aircraft will fly regionally in Africa before resuming a regular route to Ethiopian Airlines is the first airline in Africa to operate the Dreamliner, which offers enhanced on-board comfort, significantly reduced noise, higher level of humidity, bigger windows and a unique lighting system. While Ethiopian Airlines is thriving, as Zimbabwe on the corner is grounded after decades of mismanagement. Reporting for ATV, I'm Jeffrey Moyo in Harare, Zimbabwe. The sad plight of albinos in Manikaland is now of major concern and activists are now calling for more support to address the needs of albinos in the province. Andrew Mambondiani reports. Many children with albinism in Manikaland are abandoning school because of the stigma and discrimination. However, the Manikaland Albino Association is championing the rights and needs of people with albinism in the province. With the Zimbabwe discrimination, yangu pera bati shiri koshayo, kutiwa ku mavana maskuz, they are given my name, se wano shares wanao, so we zengu awa sushi fariri, pangwane gachin se morongo, pangwane gachin se poloni, pangwa pasha ne gachin se nguruve, saka zungu zengu awa no nauti mwana kana rukunda kuchikoro, achiwa na my name se akadaro, jinu jisinga somu na kizuo. Mazaiwana said the stigmatization of children with albinism was more rampant in rural schools. Tivangu varukuma misha vajinchi vacho, njoo varukuto wana matambuzi kwa akawanda, ni kuti zuwezengu wa kuchukoro, shinoto tangandeshe kuti distance yacho, inenge ili po kubapa mbapa ke kuenda kuchukoro, ya kareba. Saka zuwezengu wa ni kuda kwe zuva, vangu vacho vanorekeza. Deni vangu vacho kuma misha vajinchi varu kubama families ya kuti, Ava kwa nisi kwa foda ifi ni mafizi achwe kubadia rada na iva avo. Saka they end up wa kuti wada iti wana indi sabayi mwana. Iwewe they say kuti unu iti kuchukoro. Wopesira wakwa singa cha indi sabayi na iwa kuchukoro. Other members of the Manikal and Albino Association say they still face numerous challenges be it at work or at school. Sometimes kune nko chipi such a isu. But tino to Manikids got tishandere fazua. 
eh zvakawa marara uye zve zvisina kuti kumbosiyani sana umwe munhu there are some people who get it and they want to associate with you nevamwe kungoti they keep their distance saka so, as an individual and i've just learned to read between the lines ungonoti awa wana i can be friends with them a honongo apo space yao but being an albino does not mean one is different from any other people eh tiri vanhu vakangofanana eh tiri vanhu vanongoita zvinhu zvakangofanana anofana ongozisa in her own position asango zvitarisire pasi kana kuti kutarisa nekuti ganda ganda ndiro rinoita zvinhu with more education and awareness one can only hope that society will get to respect and recognize the rights of people living with albinism reporting for ATV in Mutare Zimbabwe the Munya's rural informal sector is providing refuge for the growing army of laid-off workers and those looking for opportunities to earn a living. Andrew Mambondiani reports. The informal sector is thriving in Zimunya, providing employment opportunities and income to rural people in this district in the eastern part of the country. Some of the people told ATV that they realized that venturing into small businesses and offering services can provide them with income to earn a decent living. Ah, ndingati unagare munhu. Chenda kaona zvekuti anhu aite kurarama kazviri mumwe munyika munhu. Ngoti nini kutanga kwenda taita pana panda tone zato chinja maningi pa openyu hwangu. Pane zvindai mboita dzimwe dzengwa ndiri kuna na South Africa. Ngoti ku South Africa unokwanisa kuenda uchienda kusenzera rese rese asi mari unopuaka haifana nini mari ndiri kuona pane kana kanyari kadiki handidika ndinokwanisa kurara mise muri yangu nekuite zvindi nokwanisa kuita ndiri kutorarama e padoko pa chidoko chirera mweri chidoko chirera mweri e wana rukwendo wakuchikoro apo mbichena mbichena asi but hazvina midimire zvakanaka asingoto chidoko chirera mweri e zvakaite kuti ndizvo zvitangiri kuita zvangu inyaya kuti ndakenda senza pandai senzira ndaito senzura munhu saka twandai wana twacho twanga tusingaiti ndi chichidzidza ndi chiteru zviyo dzamara ndazotosuka kuti ah no nino funga ndikaita kuti twanguka ndingandorara misa umuri yangu some of the people say venturing into small businesses is better than seeking employment in neighboring countries like south africa ngwe si yapere ndaiende ku south africa ndi chimbosha ndiro south africa asi ndakazono kuti nekuenda kwengu Urampo uchishandira mu South Africa. Hakuna uh, dhisi. Zviri nani kushandira kumba uchione mhuri yako ngoti pesa apa ndaimbo siye mhuri kakumba. Ndichienda kushandira South Africa. Asi ndakazono kuti zviri nani ndishande ndiri pikumba nemhuri. But there are challenges too in the informal sector that need to be addressed. Matambu dziko ndiro kusangana nawo pana pange kuti moto ndiro kushandisa pana pange wechigaya. Saka e e e kuzes ano we chiti ati fa nuko shanti sisi moto yuo tino fa nuko ngati chito pedu pe tino fa nuko kuitir saka nda nda kati nini nda ndo ono ono tiba tiro tindi te stand yangu ndi no kwe yao magets ndi chite zimu zangu ndo ziti re pa siri ngoti ipo ba ba building yangu iri andra chigai. And despite all the problems, the informal sector in rural areas is playing an important role in the development of the rural economy. Reporting for ATV, Irmutare, Zimbabwe. NGO workers recently took a break from their demanding humanitarian work and drowned their weariness in sporting activities that raised cash to help support disadvantaged children. Robert Tafumane reports. Over 17 humanitarian organizations in the country converged at Gateway High School to compete in the inter-NGO games, helping to raise money for charity. The organizer of the event from World Education International told ATV that this was their fifth annual event. We have athletic soccer, netball, volleyball, tennis are going on, and also you know there's going to be an egg race and all this other. You know, so it's more on the less serious side. You know, it's an opportunity for. People who do this humanitarian work, which at times a little heavy, to come through and actually, you know, um, share ideas, have fun, you know, in the less stressful environment. Money raised from the Bry food sale and other fundraising activities will be channeled towards supporting orphan and vulnerable children. The process of this event, um, they go for for this year. We select that they go to out of school sites. Uh, community learning centers where children who drop out of school are congregating 
and they are receiving you know, education, child protection, and other services. Local music star Leonard Jakarta was nominated ambassador of the games. Leonard Jakarta is our, our ambassador for the program uh, where he's agreed to do a remix of Yaruto, one of his songs, which is sort of a clarion call to parents to come in and to, uh, for, ev for all, every one of us to be a parent. Uh, so that we come in and make sure that we do what we can, either to get children back into school or to retain them into school. Speaking soon after launching his song, Yaruto, Jagata said every parent has a duty to look after their children. Every parent, every single parent, no matter a thief, no matter a robber, he still expects better things, better future for his or her child. So really, I was trying to express the feelings of a parent. You know, towards the future of their children. According to World Education International, nearly one in four children in Zimbabwe has lost one or both parents. A number of the NGOs are running various programs to support vulnerable children in the country. Teams competed in disciplines such as soccer, tennis, volleyball, and netball. Save the Children won the soccer and netball category, while Concern Worldwide made winners in the volleyball games. Population Services International won tennis, Oxfam won the tug of war games. Reporting for ATV, Robert Afmani Arare, Zimbabwe. Thank you for joining us. Good night.